well. Awesome, so welcome everybody. We'll get started with our um, Thirsty Thursday. So we're gonna kick off with a lovely Kyra. So I'm gonna spotlight her. So if you um, are watching, it is easier to have it on speaker view. If you have it on speaker view, the person who is presenting will be spotlighted and you'll be able to see them really clearly. So you should be able to see um, Kyra on the screen. So over to you, Kyra. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to our Thirsty Thursday. You ready for a big night? We are in for some fun. So I've already got my Thermomix started already because I wanted to quick as up kick us off fairly quickly. So what I've done is I've we're actually making a pineapple infused gin that we will serve like a gin and tonic later on. So I've already prepared. So I've got my gin in here with my pineapple and my ginger. Now this recipe is actually on Cookie Do and I made it on the weekend and I loved it. But what happened was I actually posted it on my socials and the actual recipe developer contacted me and said, are you what, making my, my cocktail by any chance? And it turned out I was. She's an Australian that now lives in Missouri in America and she's now a consultant and she won a competition that she entered to actually submit this recipe into um, their pineapple passion collection. And um, I've had a really lengthy talk to her. She actually was born in Caloundra, lived in Newcastle, met her husband that's American and has moved back. So she'll be excited to see us making this. So if you do make it, by all means, post it on your socials so that she can actually see it. So, um, so that's what I've done. My gin, my pineapple and my uh, ginger, I've popped in there. And then what it's asking me to do is to pop it into a vacuum seal bag. Which you could use, or you could, if you don't have vacuum seal bags, you can use um, a Ziploc bag that's PBA uh, free. So you make sure you get the really good quality ones and don't skimp because um, they're not made to go into water. And we're going to sous vide this. And what I love about Thermomix is they actually make fantastic accessories that help us to make our dishes even better. These here are, reseal, are reusable. We can dishwash use them to clean them in the dishwasher. They are absolutely amazing. And you get like 10 for, let me just have a look, I've written it down, $14.95. So huge saving Ziploc bag. I might just turn that back on for a few more minutes just while I, next, next. Okay, give me one second. I just wanna um, talk this through. So what I've got in there is now my blade cover. So if you don't have a blade cover, you will need that for this particular dish. Um, and then and again, you can get that on the mix shop. But what I now love is that we've got these amazing bag holders. So we can actually pop our Ziploc bags in these. I'm gonna show you how it works in a second um, to make it easier for us to refill our bags. So here I've got one ready to go. So you literally put the bag in underneath like so. And now what I'm gonna do is gently <laughs> pour in my gin. Hope you can see that. And pineapple. Look at that one handed and it's holding for me. I just don't wanna spill it all over the all over my kitchen bench and make an idiot of myself. But there you go. How good was that? All right. So now what we're going to do is vacuum seal this. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to just push these together just so it's sealed a bit. I hope you can see all this. All right. And now I'm just going to lift it off that and seal it up with my fingers the best I can. But Thermomix have this handy little handhold vacuum sealer. It does come in um, a box with, um, ten, I think it's six bags um, of these bags. So you can do things like your sous vide of your steak and your um, eggs and things like that. So it's really simple to use. I'm just going to hook it onto the little dot here. And we're going to press the button in the end there. There we go. And it's going to start to remove the air from that bag. Hang on, it's going to go again. 
Oh, here we go. The beauties of um, being live, huh? Been working all day for me. Maybe I'm sure, I've I'm sure you've done this a hundred times. It's the pressure of everything. I have. <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's dead. I'm so sorry. So anyway, we can come back to me and I will go and charge that up quickly. Um, but now what's going to happen now is my water has heated up. So I've got the blade cover in there with some water. I'll show you. The water's in there. Can you see the blade cover? And now what it's going to ask me to do is actually sink that into there just gently. Now, if you don't have a, um, a vacuum sealer, you can actually do the water, what's it called? The water displacement method. And they've actually got that listed um, in the tips underneath the recipe itself. So I'm going to fix this up, pop it in there and get it going. And you'll come back to me a little bit later on. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kyra. Um, I will flick over now to the lovely Danny. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sorry, yeah. I was mute. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm going to be making a couple of things tonight, but we're starting off with the very cordial. And we're doing this first because there is five-minute cook time and a little later there's a six-minute cook. So instead of keeping you all waiting, I'm just going to do it in bits and pieces. So I'm going to just press my little hamburger menu, the three lines at the top, go to my week, and I've got in today to cook the berry cordial. So I'm just going to select that. And I can scroll down and read all the instructions and the method and make sure that I've got everything ready or I haven't got any of the ingredients missing. I'm going to press start cooking. And it says to add 130 grams of fresh berries or frozen. And I've just got frozen mixed berries, okay? So I'm just going to pop them in and it says 130 grams. So I'll tear it. Pop those in, 131 grams. Next, now I want 300 grams of water. So I'll be popping this in, I'll tear it again. 300 grams. A little bit extra, that's okay. I just rinse the bowl, get all this in. Okay. Then it goes next, insert the measuring cup. Next, 20 seconds on speed four. So what it's going to do is just chop all those berries up and mix it with the water. Today we never got to speak over them. Wait till after this, we all won't have our little cocktails and drinks to drink at the end. So I think we'll have a very nice evening. Okay, so I'm going to add 20 seconds just to chop all of that up. This is a great one, Danny, because strawberries are so cheap. Mulberries are in season. Uh, where can we get some mulberries? I asked my husband. Where can we go pick some? All right, next. No, it says keep the measuring cup in. So what that's done, I'll just show you. It's just chopped up all the berries with the water. So it's just like a real liquid there now. Okay. So it's going to cook off for five minutes. And then I'll come back after we've done that cook off. Okay. So we'll keep the show on, keep the show going, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Danny. Kyra, did you want to us to go over to you or over to Amanda? Um, yeah, I can show you how it works because yep. I've got it working and it's okay. in there. Right here. Give me two secs. I'll spotlight you. There we go. So I'm really sorry. I'm trying to think of on my feet, like what I could pop in there. But anyway, I'm going to seal this up. And it literally, now I hope it works this time. I just have to, yep, here we go. I think I'm just hitting the button the wrong way. It was just working. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Am, I on Am I on mute? No. Okay, it's easier if the bag's on the bench. Put the bag on the bench and it generally works that way. Oh, How's that working? The seal is getting camera shot. 
Well, I'm just going to do a video later and I'll send okay. it to you all. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kyra. I'll send that in the email. Um, so over to the lovely Amanda. I will spotlight you, Amanda. So Amanda has actually got a lovely special guest that I'm very excited to be on tonight. So over to you guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Harper is joining us. Uh, she's going to make, oh, we've turned off. She's going to make a lemonade for us that she made at the start of the school holidays and we all loved it. Um, so I put her hand up for her tonight. She's been loving cooking during the school holidays um, and it's so easy with the thermo mix. She's extremely nervous, which is very cute. Um, so I'll hand over and we'll see how she goes. <laughs> All right. So what are you going to do first? I'll just hold on a second, Harper, sorry. Can everybody see Harper and Amanda or can you see me? I can see them both. Okay, yes, so I'm not spotlighted. Okay, somebody just sent me a message that I was spotlighted. Okay, awesome. Sorry, Harper. Off you go. So first I start Talk clearly. First I start off with going into my recipes that I have saved. So Harper has her whole book of um, recipes that she saved. She's one of our, we've got four kids and she's our pickiest. Um, so at the start of the holidays, I let her loose on cookie do. So um, 60,000 recipes and said, here you go. Tell me what you'd like to make and what you'd like to eat and cook. So lemonade was one of those. And I find that the kids are more inclined to eat something if they've chosen it um, or they've helped. It, it actually, it's true. Um, all right, so you go. So we're going to start cooking. Add two to three lemons. Unpeeled. Yeah. Unpeeled, half. Okay, pop them in. Yeah, so we've got two lemons that have been just popped in half, not even peeled, and we've got a lime as well. I thought we'd um, throw in a lime because we had lots of them. Okay, next. Add 200 grams of casting sugar. 100 grams, I hope. 10 hundred would be a lot. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, so we like to add um, half the... Sugar yep. in a lot of our recipes. Yeah. Kids get enough sugar, so we'll halve that. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. Harper, you spilled some. <laughs> All right, Harper's going to show everyone how, so with our um, current host, reward you can get the cobalt mini vacuum as one of the host rewards so you can get that for hosting at either um, half price or 49 dollars if someone purchases which is awesome um, so you can easily clear, clean that up please miss I must say it works really well and it's a novelty with the little ones. So our four-year-old loves to go around and, and help and clean up with that. Um, so it's super handy. All right, so we've got our sugar. Um, now we have 500 grams of water. Speed 10. I'm going to go all the way up to speed 10 for two seconds. Okay, next. Out another 500 grams of water. Okay, so hold on a second. Uh, I'm just going to pop that one back and do that step just one more time, just to chop it up a little bit more. <laughs> just so we can keep a bit more of flavour um, in that. So I just like to repeat that step. Okay, now you can go again. 
Now we have another 500 grams of water. Yeah. So especially in lemon season, this is a great fresh uh, drink in when it's hot. Just do the whole lot. Yeah, perfect. Next. Then we need to insert the simmering basket. Okay, so for this step, we're going to use the simmering basket to strain out all of the lemon pith and um, peels that we've got in there. Um, so it's a little bit bubbly, but very juicy. I'll try not to pour it everywhere. So we're going to cheat. We're just going to pour it straight into, instead of putting it over another jug, I'm going to use another Thermomix bowl. And we've got our simmering basket inside to catch all of those pips for us. So there you go, Miss. Now, for extra flavour, you could leave um, that to sit in there and soak for a little bit longer, which would be make it a lot stronger. Or you can um, keep repeating that step and blending it a little bit more as well. Um, so it's just got all of those leftovers there. You've got one in it. <laughs> all right. Now you can have your special glass. Okay, so we've done that. Strain. Um, we can grab some ice. There you go. Now you can pour yourself a lemonade. it up and show everyone your lemonade. Great job, Harper. Well, thank you so much for doing that. I'm going to look in my prize cupboard and see what I've got for you and I'll drop something over to you to say thank you. You did an awesome job. Thank you. What does everybody think? It's half the next, <laughs> next lot of consultant coming through. Yeah, yep. you're getting lots of claps and thumbs up, Harper. <laughs> thank you. Did you have fun? Lemonade already. <laughs> have fun? <laughs> She's right. She's ready to run yes. away now. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Now, for those of you that are regulars to our sessions, you don't see me present very often, but tonight I am going to do a presentation. So tonight I am going to be doing the superoxidant juice which is absolutely delicious. It's got um, beetroot and all sorts of things in it. So you're going to see how easy a juice can be. Um, so, Sari, I can see you. So just give me a thumbs up. Can you see both my screens spotlighted on the screen? Yep, awesome. So we're cooking with gas. So um, the mobile phone is on the screen so you can see that really clearly. So but those of you that don't have a TM6, you can see the really big screen. The pictures on there, which make it really easy. I do lots of work with NDIS and my cl clients love that big screen. So I'm going to start cooking and we're going to start throwing in our ingredients. So I've got everything prepped here already. So I will just basically throw it in. So we've got um, beetroot, a piece of ginger, a mandarin, Two carrots, two apples. I only have red apples, but that's okay. That's all that. There's a whole, whole, whole lot of fruit and veggies in there. Three quarters of the way full. My kids are excited to try this, actually. Okay, so now um, just five seconds on speed seven. Just pop in the chat if you do do some juicing or what drinks that you like to make in the family. So we've got to scrape that down. And true to Michelle's form, I always forget something. I always get my spatula. Chop that down. So that is the five seconds of chopping of all those veggies. And that beetroot gives it a really nice earthy flavour. Uh, 230 grams of filtered water. Really important to use that filtered water. Um, some ice cubes. Some 
I read the recipe wrong. I thought we did the ice cubes when it was finished. And this is the joy of um, using cookie too. But if you've never made it before, if you can read, it will work. So throwing in a few of those. So the ice is actually what helps break down the fibre in your fruit as well. And then now we're just going to blitz this for one minute on speed nine. I might just go, who's the next person on the list? Danny, I might just go to you. I'll keep my screen um, on and then okay. I'll see if I'll have the spotlight and I'll just remove me and I'll just continue to blitz. That okay, so am I, am I muted? Can you hear me? No, no you're right. Okay, all right, I'm just going to go to the next step. So cook for that five minutes um, on speed two. And it just says, I hit the next button. What I have to do is remove the, this that's cooked and I have to strain it and it wants to strain it through a fine mesh sieve. So I'm not using the um, steaming basket because the holes are a little bit too big. So I've just got this um, one that's a bit thinner or that, you know, the holes are smaller. I could use the simmering basket and perhaps put my milk bag, nut bag, or even a chucks cloth on that, and that would be fine. But this is just to, to get out all, all the um, larger pieces of the, the seeds and, and the fruit that hasn't broken down because we are making a cordial. So I'll pop that back on, strain this. Now this is going to be my cordial. And it wants me to weigh it, weigh the cordial. So I tear the scales, there we go. Now it wants to, I'll just get rid of this. Pour this back in. All right, so there's 330, 330 grams of the cordial. So now it wants me to add the exact same amount of raw sugar all right, note the exact weight, add the raw sugar. So it was 3.30. I'm going to put a little bit less. Actually, I'll do the proper one this time. Okay, sugar. Now it's going to cook, cook this into a syrup, which will end up being our cordial. Six minutes at 90 degrees on speed two. So I'm going to cook this off so the sugar will all dissolve. Six minutes speed two at 90 degrees. And because it's the TM6 of guided cooking, I just hit this, put it to speed two, and off it's going to cook for six minutes. So back to you, Michelle. That's awesome, Danny. I really love that recipe. I've done it several times and just use whatever frozen fruit I've got, like to use well, that's, it up. That is a good thing, but also you can set one part of this cordial to three parts of either water, sparkling water, or some Prosecco or some champagne. Yeah, beautiful. Yay. Like, what a great way to use it up, though. You know what I that's mean? Right. Like, you can share it with the kiddies and let them have a sparkling water. Yeah, and you know they can have a nice fancy glass, and we can put it with the the bubbles, um, and yeah, it keeps everybody happy. Yeah, and and what it and and what it how cheap like it's really cheap using up fruit that you've probably already got. But this is just oh what was three hundred grams of frozen berries, yeah. which is nothing. Yeah, nothing Beautiful. exactly. And with strawberries, where they are now, make it with strawberries, and you can get you know one punnet, one and a half punnets. So it might cost you two dollars, three dollars. That's exactly right, and you know exactly what's in it. No chemicals, yeah. no. And you don't need as much sugar. You don't. That's need exactly much. right. 
Yes. Awesome. There you go. So, Michelle, are you back in your office? I'm back. I'm back. Sari just had a question. I'm not too sure if you read it out because my Thurby was going and I couldn't hear what you guys were saying. No. I wanted to know if you can use like monk fruit, xylitol, all those keto type sugars with the cordial. I'm sure you would be able to. What's your opinion? You can. Yep. You can. Absolutely. I would use a monk fruit or an erythritol. Because xylitol is not allowed in my house because it's poisonous for dogs. Yes, yep. So, yeah, I avoid that like the plague. Yeah. But, but erythritol or monk fruit, yes. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. And I had a question for you. I put it in the chat. Your beetroot, does it have to be raw? Yes, raw beetroot. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I will spotlight me now. Look at that. We're all learning from each other. Yes, love I it. love it. And um, I love these cooking classes because I'm inspired. I've been making quite a few dishes. I made um, Nathan's steak kebab things that he makes. I've made that quite a few times. I made, I think, Kyra, something that you made the other day. Uh, I love it. So now I have made the juice, which it's a bit hard with the laptop to show you what it looks like. But now what we've got to do, we've got to sieve that because Thermomix is not a cold press juice. It, uh, juicer, it still retains the fibre. So the old sieve and your second bowl comes in handy, like um, Amanda used hers, I'll be using mine. And I'm just going to pop that in the sieve. Michelle, that colour. Yeah, it's great. Um, Louise Fulton Keats has a really good one too. Um, yeah, my kids used to call it the pink drink. It was um, berries with beetroot, and they couldn't get enough of that when they were little. So they have lots of different combos. So I'll continue this, and who's the next one on our run sheet? Who's after? Uh, is it you, Beck? I think Beck might be you. Yeah, Beck, ready to go. And then I'll just show you my finished product when I've finished. So I'll just. Um, Spotlight Beck. Now, I just wanted to um, introduce Beck because I'm so proud of her. She's like two weeks into her consultancy of sold two thermomixes. She's come on board to earn her TM6 for free. And I said, look, who wants to present? It's um, you know, drinks. It's really easy and quick. And Beck was one of the first people to put her hand up to present. So most people are nervous to present at a cooking class, but kudos to you, Beck. You've um, taken it by the shirt tails and given it a go. So over to you. Thanks for having me. I am actually a teacher in my other life. So I'm used to teaching, but I'm used to teaching primary school kindy to year two age kids. So I apologise if I start talking to you all like six year olds. Um, I also have two toddlers of my own. So everything in our house needs to be quick and easy and as simple as we, it can be. So I'm actually doing the breakfast on the go smoothie. And it's from the Meals in a Flash cookbook, which at the moment you get free as well as the um, toolkit when you purchase a Thermomix. So um, that's just one of the little perks. And I have been cooking from that book um, for a long time. And then when we found out that was the deal for this month, I've been pretty much just cooking everything from that. And it's a, it's a huge lifesaver. So um, breakfast on the go. So all you need, um, and I make quite a few tweaks and changes to it, but I'm gonna do it pretty much how they do it tonight for you. So 30 grams of rolled oats and a teaspoon of linseed, which I've already put here into my bowl. Um, and linseeds are usually found at like a health food store. Um, they are super, super healthy. They're a great um, superfood. And if you're a breastfeeding mum, they're really great for milk supply, um, little tip. And then this is going to get all chopped up and milled so that you don't actually have lumpy bits in your smoothie. So 20 seconds and it's going to go to speed 10. So it's going to be a bit loud. Sorry, guys. While Beck's doing that, linseeds are also known as flaxseeds. So I think um, linseed is the Australian version, flaxseed is the American version. While looking at recipes, it's the same thing. All right, then it's asking me for a ripe banana. Um, 
we don't often get overripe bananas in our house because my kids absolutely love bananas and they eat them all day. Um, but if I do, I just peel them and chuck them into a bag in the freezer and you can use them frozen in your smoothie as well. It actually makes it creamier. Um, I managed to steal this one off the toddler this morning. Then it says to add 250 grams of almond milk. I don't personally like almond milk, so I mostly use oat milk or coconut milk. But you can use any um, type of milk and you can make your own in the Thermomix. It's not something that I've actually done yet. Um, I'm still at the point of buying mine, but it is definitely something that I'm looking at doing. And I've actually seen Michelle do a cooking class a few years ago where she made the almond milk and then used the pulp to make something else. So you're not wasting anything. That goes in. My sister's a vegan and she loves making oat milk. So if there's any barista type people out there, she said it's the best thing to whip up your coffee and give you the froth on your milk as well. Yeah, I know Kira's on here tonight and she is dairy intolerant and she's made a lot of oat milk as well. Yeah, it's, it's heaps cheaper to, to make it yourself. Now it says to use two teaspoons of cocoa powder. I um, actually use one of our protein powders. We've got quite a few different flavors, so you can easily change the flavor of it or you can just use cocoa powder or Milo or things like that. So whatever flavor it is that um, you wanna make it. Next. Um, vanilla bean paste, which I'm not going to add tonight because I've used vanilla protein powder and it ends up making it too vanilla for my taste. Then 10 grams of honey and a tablespoon of nut butter of choice, which is optional. So um, I make my own almond butter. So I've scooped some out and it's literally just blended up almonds. There's nothing else added. It's just almonds and I've got my honey in there as well. Love it. Does anyone make any of these things that we're talking about, the different alternative milks and nut butters and things like that? Pop that in the chat, we'd love to hear. And then 150 grams of ice cubes, which I've left in the freezer so that they don't um, defrost. And then it's going to get blended for 40 seconds on speed 10 and then it's done and dusted um, and I'll put it into my beautiful glass and show you later, but it's gonna be nice and loud. So. Um, it's delicious. It makes two servings. So um, we often have it for my husband and I and the kids will have porridge or something. Or you can also fit double the amount in this bowl um, and make four servings. So us and the kids will all have it um, for brekkie. And I often just put it into like a um, travel coffee mug. And that's what I drink on my way to work because I don't have time to sit down and, and eat breakfast. So there's a million different smoothie recipes on um, Cookie Doo, but this is the one that that I love the most. And I'm super excited about Cookie Doo 3.0 that's coming. So the changes that I make, I can actually put into my Cookie Doo and make it easier for my husband to be able to just pick it up and run with it without having to remember all the things that I tell him that I need to change. So um, yeah, I on to it. the person. Thanks so much, Beck. Yes, yeah, Sue, when I get back in the office, I will be putting all the links um, just in the kitchen. So I will do that. Um, so I'll just spotlight myself. She did really well, didn't she, first time around? Thanks so much. Excellent, excellent. Um, so this here is the delicious um, antioxidant um, juice, so vegetables and um, fruit there. And in our tea, we're all share bears and we're, we've got a really great culture. So the mint is care of a bed, uh, contactless delivery. So <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so what um, uh, Beck was talking about, a gift with purchase, the um, Mills and Flush cookbook, which I think Kyra's got that. She'll show us when we go back to Kyra. Um, so that recipe that um, Beck's made is from that. Um, and I'm sure lots of you have seen the sticky chicken, which is on the front recipe cover. That's a brilliant recipe. Everybody give that a go if you haven't already. Um, and the um, chill kit. So... I'll share a little video in a minute. Um, so it comes with potato peeler, which I peeled the um, beetroot with, and a scoop, which you can scoop out, um, you know, the flesh of uh, avocado, DC, the pumpkin, scoop out coconut cream, two lovely knives. There's another knife there that I'm missing, which, oh no, here we go. Another knife, which could be a bread knife, a butter knife, 
um, and some great scissors. And the scissors are really cool. They've actually got a bottle opener inside as well. So you can put that and open your bottles as well. So you can't buy that. You only get that if you are a consultant or lucky people who are purchasing this month get it. Fantastic. So that pack is worth um, $165. Excellent. So thank you. Um, Amanda, we're back over to you. So I'm in the kitchen. So you see it runs better when I'm not cooking. Um, so you're, over, you're next. Okay, no worries. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, I'm making a coffee drink now and I forget what it's called. Um, so I'll go into my week. I've got it in my weekly planner. Um, so the... Dalgona coffee. I've never made this before. I don't drink coffee, um, but uh, I'll give it to my husband. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to halve the recipe as well because, like I said, I don't drink it. It's only got four ingredients, so nice and easy. Um, I didn't even need to go to the shop to buy anything, which makes it um, even easier at the moment because we don't want to be going to the shop to grab a couple of things at the moment. Um so you can also have a variation for this one. You could make it a cold drink instead of heating the milk as well. Um, so you could put ice cubes in it instead of making it a warm one. Um, so I will start cooking. Now we need 600 grams of milk or a dairy-free milk of choice. You can use, um, like everyone was saying, um, any kind of milk that you like. And then I'm just going to halve that as well. So I'll just pop 300 grams in there. And then pop the lid on. And then that's just going to heat at 70 degrees for four minutes. So that's me for now. Amanda, I've made this lots of times and it is delicious. And okay. I even had it when I was in Vietnam as well. They are really, really yum. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll give it a try. I made it for my husband today at lunch and he loved it. Super easy. <laughs> um, yeah, so the lovely Beck touched on um, Cookie Do 3.0. So has everyone heard the news? Let me just go to gallery so I can see faces. Who's heard the news? Yes, some of you have, some of you haven't. So um, we are getting an overhaul of Cookie Do, and it's going to be called Cookie Do 3.0. And exactly what Beck said, you can actually upload the recipes to your TM6 and cook those via guided cooking. Who's excited about that? So this means that any recipe that you tweak, as Beck said, you know, she gets her husband to cook dinner and say, yep, yeah, so make the... Mongolian lamb, but we, you know, we're gluten free. So don't use that flour, use this flour, add a pinch of this and take the chili out for the kids. You know, he probably can't remember all that. Um, so she can upload that um, recipe conversion onto her um, TM6 so her hubby can create that um, with guided cooking. If you've got family recipes, your grandma's favourite shortbread or whatever it may be, you can upload those. Or if you've got your favourite recipe on Cookie G, you can upload that as well. So that is super, super exciting. If you've got people with allergies in your family, it's a great um, way to get those alternatives up there as well. So type in the chat if you're excited about that. I know that we all are. We found out on Monday about it. Um, so it is something that is will be coming soon. Okay. so I love the fact that it can go in your meal planning. Yes, definitely. So I'll just spotlight to the lovely Beck so she can show us her lovely drink. Here we go. So this is the beautiful breakfast on the go. And it is delicious. And while that's all been happening, I've actually done a pre-clean on my machine. So it's fully done and ready for me to just tip out and give it a dry ready for me to cook again later on tonight so Lovely. yeah yes. so you've come from a tm5 to a tm6 um yes. is the pre-clean one of your favorite features what's one of your favorite features yes so the pre-clean is definitely one of my favorites um and i think the thicken mode so the custard was was great in the tm5 but it's even better in the thicken mode and doing your hollandaise sauces and your bechamels and things like that um that is just the the biggest game changer for me but that pre-clean where we make our breakfast and we clean it and it's it's finished cleaning itself before we've even finished eating is 
the best. <laughs> Lovely. That's great. I know there's a few of you that have come from TM31s to TM6s or TM5s to TM6s. I'd love you to pop in the chat to tell us what your favourite features are as well, but maybe be able to help somebody else. So thanks so much, Beck. You've done really well coming on today. So thank you. Uh, over to you, Amanda. Has that finished? Yes, we've got 30 seconds left to go, so not too long. And I can probably stop it anyway because I um, halved it so it didn't have as much. Yeah, awesome. So we'll let that cool down. So. Okay. So now divide, it says to divide between four glasses. I've got two. I've got um, two different styles of glasses here. So if you're entertaining at the end of the night, you can be a little bit fancy with your coffee. Okay, so just pop them there. Now rinse the mixing bowl. I'll skip that. Insert the butterfly whisk. So grab that. Okay, now 50 grams of water. So I've got to remember to halve that. And set the measuring cup. And then it's going to heat that little bit of water now as well for a minute and a half. Awesome. Thanks for that, um, Amanda. Um, is anybody else ready to go? I can see um, lovely Daddy. So yes, add you to the spotlight. Thank you. Okay, this um, very cordial, so it says, I did it for the six minutes, um, as you saw me do, and it finished quite a while ago. But the next step is to leave it to cool in the bowl for 30 minutes. So I'm just going to pop that aside um, over here. Pick up my another bowl, and I'm going to go straight on to the mango daiquiris. Okay, I can't just have it very cordial. We need something that's a little bit more um, life in it for tonight. Okay, so I'm going to hit my home button and go to my week mango daiquiri. All right, so I'm going to start cooking the daiquiri. And I've decided that because it's this hour of night, I'm not going to drink the whole lot. I'm going to also have mine as well. Okay. So if I start cooking, and that, now it's asking me, do I want to get out of the recipe that I was just in? And of course I do for now. So I'll go yes. Okay. It wants 40 to 60 grams of raw sugar to taste. I don't want to put any sugar in mine at all. Okay. Because I find that the mango is actually sweet enough. But of course, if you want to put it in, you can. And that's the beauty of this. You just skip it, go next, next. The next step is to mill the sugar down, which I, I am not doing. Then it wants 500 grams of mango. So I'm halving it. So in my maths brain, that says 250. So I've got my frozen mango pieces in my little thermo server, keeping it nice and cold. So 250 grams of mango. There's some of you may want to put the sugar in it, but it's just something that I never do. Then it goes, it wants 400 grams of ice cubes. So I've got my ice cubes here and I only want 200. Okay. Next. And insert the measuring cup. This is just how easy it is to make a a really quick uh, daiquiri. Hit next. 20 seconds on speed nine. Now, because it's got the ice cubes in that and the frozen mango, it's going to be very loud, but I think Zoom will cut the noise out. So I turn it around to nine. Next, all right, it wants 60 grams of rum. Now, am I halving it? Yes. First of all, I'll show you that. So that's just whipped up all that mango and the ice. So it's 
very much like a sorbet. If I had put the sugar in, it would be a sorbet. But I'm scraping it down. It didn't ask me to do that though. 60 grams of white rum, but I'm going to put in 30. If my daughter was here, she'd put in double. Sure you are, Danny. You're just telling us you're putting in 30. Sorry? I said, you're just telling us you're putting in 30. No, look, I've, I've teared. I don't know if you can read that from where you are. Oh, she was 44. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Now I want 60 grams of Pontro, which is half as 30. So let's see what we go here. Lighter on this one. The two. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. 30 grams of lemon juice. So I've got my lemon juice. I freeze it into ice cube trays. We had so many lemons there a little while ago. So I've frozen mine into ice cubes and I've got them here. It says 30 grams, so we want 15. There we go. Next. Insert the metric cup. Next. 10 seconds speed line. How easy is this, eh? So on Saturday night, I am doing a um, cooking class with the famous um, Candice. Candice is a drag queen in our um, branch. And we both love camping. So we're doing a glamping special. And Candice's signature is cocktail making. So if you're interested in seeing some more cocktails, I'll post the link and you guys, I'll email it to you. You guys can jump on and join us for a bit of fun. I'm going to set um, the caravan up with the permitting in our paddock and have some fun with it. So, um, yeah, love you guys to join us. Okay, so there we go. Can you see that? I don't know what you can see on my camera, but I'm going to pour it. Oh, yum. I've got my strawberry. Cut a little slit in it. Pop it on there. Mango daiquiri. Lovely. Love it, love it, love it. And it's just, oh. Mm. Good. Just Not too much Bacardi at all. <laughs> she has to um, taste test, of course. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you want to know the, the, I don't know who's got to go next. Who's next? Uh, uh, I the coffee back on. Yeah. Um, we will... So that's heated the little bit of water I had in there. So now I'm just going to add some sugar. So remembering to halve it. And then 20 grams of instant coffee. Okay. Next, pop the lid on. So they were our four ingredients. And then again for another two minutes, um, it's going to whip that for us. So we might flick over to the lovely Holly now so she can start her pina colada and then you can just um, yeah, plate it up and show us the finished product, if that's okay. Excellent. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Hold on, just I'm, um, Hold on, wait a minute, Holly. I just need to get you up on the spotlight. Hold on. Where are you? There. There we go. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Holly. Um, I've been around for a while. I haven't been on the lives like this. I do a few lives on my page occasionally. But when they said drinks and cocktails, I had to get on with everyone tonight. <laughs> so um, I'm doing the pina colada and this is one I do uh, quite often with friends and family and they love it. So we'll jump straight into it. Um, pina colada is obviously in your cookie do. We've got 500 grams of ice cubes. And then we've got 500 grams of fresh pineapple cut into pieces. I actually couldn't get fresh today, so I have used um, canned pineapple, but it makes no difference. I do both. And then we've got 100 to 150 grams of caster sugar, seed tips. So you can go in. I'll show you after how to get into your tips. But the beauty of your Thermomix, as most of you know, is you can adjust your sugars anyway. So I sort of, when I'm doing it a first time, I like to stick around what they say and then you, I'll adjust it to what I like. Now this is um, turn speed selector to five, then increase speed gradually to speed 10. So 
Away we go, up to five. Might get a little noisy. Michelle? Just. Oh, are you talking, Holly? We can't hear you now. Has anyone made the pina colada? Put it in the chat if you've made a pina colada and what flavour pina colada? Yeah, Jody said yes, delicious. I'll just go through and answer some of the chat questions while we're waiting for Holly. So Kira, um, kickoff will be seven for the glamping show. Um, what have we got? So Joe said that she loves a free clean for sourdough. Rachel said she loves the browning option as she's upgraded. Um, those changes to Cookie Do 3.0, my understanding of what we've been told so far, it's only just been announced. It is predominantly for the TM6, but um, more information will come. Um, so, Jody, if you are connected to a consultant, which I will find out afterwards, they can let you know more information as it rolls out as well. Sorry, guys, I know most of you know with the ice, it's pretty noisy in that, but. I'm hoping Michelle filled in the blanks while I was gone. Yep, definitely. So we've got 400 grams of coconut milk. Pop that in. And then we've got 180 grams of Malibu rum. So it actually says C tips on here. So hopefully most of you do know with the TM6, we've got three little dots on the screen. If you just press that, you can go into your recipe details and you can go back down and see what your tips are. And it does say here, we used Malibu. However, you can use a standard white rum in this recipe. You will need to adjust the amount of sugar used accordingly. In brackets, coconut flavored rum is generally a bit sweeter than standard white rum. So I could tend to have Malibu, then you just pull it back up and continue. I tend to have Malibu for this one all the time, but if you were um, out and about and you didn't have extras, you'd just use whatever rum you, white rum you had. Mm, the Malibu put, gives it that nice coconutty taste, doesn't it, Paul? I agree, yeah. If you accidentally dropped it, splashed a bit more in, that won't matter either, I don't think. <laughs> not at all, not at all, Holly. Can I, just, can I just point out, everyone's done half apart from Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the full amount, Michelle. Okay. I've done the full amount. So then we've got... Um, Turn speed selector to five, so it's just going to have a quick mix there with that in there. And then it actually says, which I'm, I haven't done with this part, but it says spread some desiccated coconut onto a plate. Oops. And then lightly dampen the rims of six hurricane, hurricane glasses with water, then dip in, into the coconut. You could use any type of glasses, obviously. Um, so we'll see, I've got actually a little wine glass here. And we'll just pour it in. This has to be my favourite cocktail, but I actually love doing any cocktails um, in it because when we used to have cocktail nights, they were always messy. Uh, if you had the shakers and we had 100 different alcohols out with the Thermomix, you can just put it all in and it's so much neater now. So, yeah, there we've got the pina colada. Wow. And that one's a favourite. We'll take yeah. it for us because we'll send that off to everyone as well. Great sure. job, Holly. We thank you. Also, thank you so much for jumping on. Um, we've also got a hashtag. So if anybody um, makes anything from today, if you use our hashtag, Legends Mixed It, I've just got it in the chat, um, we will see your creations. So over to you, Amanda. We'll see your finished product. Yeah. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's both of those. I probably could have put them into the one glass, but two different examples. Uh, but yeah, so it made the coffee really thick and creamy and then you just plonk that on the top. 
Um, and it started to seep down into the milk as well. And it smells amazing. Mind you, my 15-year-old came down and went, oh, what is that smell? That's <laughs> <laughs> But I don't like coffee, but I love the smell of it. It smells really good. Me too. Yeah. I'm with you. Can I just ask all the team, can you do me a picture, a video later of you cheersing with all your drinks that you make tonight? Yeah, okay. we've been drinking this as we've been going. It's nice and fresh, <laughs> lemonade. Um, <laughs> lovely any Bacardi in that any what Bacardi in the uh, no I've been sharing it with Harper so no Myra are you ready for us to spotlight you to finish off your recipe yes please okay, where are you you're up here all right so again my apologies as you can see, it's now charging away. You can see the green light on there. It was red. So it's not actually, <laughs> wasn't working. So that's the problem. It does work. And I will do a little video and show you how it works and we'll send that to you as well. Um, so now I'm just going to finish off my drink. So at the moment, it's still got an hour and 12 minutes to go. So it's two hours that you actually have the uh, bag inside sous vide in your Thermomix. Then what you need to do is strain it. So I just use my little funnel with my strainer into my bottles, okay? So it actually makes about one and a half of these um, in the end. Um, so what we'll do now is pop some, um, I've got my glass ready to go with my little, so I've popped some ice into my tiny little mini thermo server to keep it nice and cold. I love these um, when we've got people over that I can actually do this when we're making cocktails and it does keep our ice fairly, um, fairly together without it melting, without finding another word to use that. So now I'm just going to pop in my, um, my pineapple and gin, um, pineapple infused gin. It does have a bit of ginger. I'm just going to pop the rest of that in and we're going to top it with some tonic water. And it is delicious. Have you made this before, Cara? Yes, I have. <laughs> it's really good. And when I was talking to Margot, the recipe developer, she said you can use um, pineapple and gin, or you can, sw I mean, pineapple and ginger with your gin, or you can swap the ginger out and put in, she believe this, I've never thought to actually put um the pineapple with rosemary but she's done a recipe with uh, she just swaps the ginger out for rosemary and also sage she said you can also use peppercorns or um what was the other thing she said there was different things um but basically she's written it in the tips like holly said before you can go to the bottom of the screen when you go into your recipe detail and it tells you at the bottom so Margot said to me that really works, but her favourite is pineapple and ras and a rosemary together. And um, yeah, so I thought that was really cool that she did contact me. So if you actually do make it, please hashtag, you know, pineapple um, infused gin and tonic, and then she'll be able to see that everybody's making it. So cheers to everyone. This is a beautiful, beautiful drink. And my little bamboo straws I bought in Vietnam. So there you go. Um, Michelle asked me to show you the Mills, um, Mills in a Flash cookbook. It is a super favourite. She did talk about this dish that's on the front. The, um, this is a super duper great recipe when you actually have a lot of people over because you can double the recipe almost because you cook the chicken in the oven after coating it. Um, so you make the coating in the Thermomix um, you can make a full thing of rice and pop it in your thermo server to put that aside and then fill your aroma up with lots and lots of vegetables and double the sauce. So it's a really great one. I do it with my family because I've got a sister's family of six that are vegetarians and we, um, we all can eat the same meal um, but not actually um, have to cook different things for the vegetarians and the vegans and all that sort of stuff. We can just cook this one dish and everybody's happy and it will feed about 16, just using one machine. Um, so, but there's great, great recipes in here. 
for everything like, um, you know, the drink that we did, the breakfast on the go to salads with lots and lots of beautiful colour and ingredients to pasta dishes. And they're all under 40 minutes. So this is what comes with your TM6 at the moment, along with the toolkit that Michelle was talking about. I love the toolkit. And what I discovered recently was I always use the bread, the serrated big knife at, that looks like a bread knife to me for bread. Anyway, I was reading that it actually is really good for spreading butter. And I don't eat a lot of white bread that's, um, you know, the really fresh white, white bread, you know, that bright bread. Um, and when you go to put butter on it, sometimes it, it breaks the bread up. Well, if you use that knife, it actually spreads that butter on and you don't chop up all your bread. It is amazing. So no longer do I have, um, when my boys ask for white, white bread, do I have that happen? It actually, um, it actually will all stay together by using that knife. So um, the toolkit is amazing. I've had one for close to eight, well, yeah, eight years now, and um, it's still going strong in my, um, in my utensil drawer. So Michelle, do you need me to talk about anything else or? No, I think that's it, Cara, thanks so oh, much. I do Lovely. need to say that yes. when you, this will actually last in your fridge for ages because it's got the alcohol in it. So it's not like something, um, that you need to preserve and drink in a week or whatever you could if you wanted to but I'm just letting you know that it will last a while because it's got all the alcohol in it lovely thanks so much this is what I love about our community Kyra there's so many comments here about the meals and the flush cookbook it is a favorite with lots of people um so Vanessa said um she made the sticky chicken tonight for the first time. It was amazing. Um, Rachel said she loves the Mexican one-pot pasta. It's the best. And Sari said the sweet and sour pork from Mills and Yes. Rice. It's great. Um, Kira said a couple of salads she's made with shredded chicken, sweet potato, cranberry dressing and spinach. The rocket one is really great as well. So I've just got a couple of quick polls if um, you guys. Do you want me to finish the berry juice, the cordial? Oh, yes, sorry. Okay, go. sorry, it's only a couple of seconds. I've gone back to the um, cordial recipe because I had gone out of it to get the daiquiri. So I just scroll down to where I was and it says to allow to cool for 30 minutes, so that's fine. It says to add two teaspoons of lemon juice, so I'm going to pop that in. Next, insert the measuring cup lid. Next. All right, 10 seconds on speed two. Let it go. While Danny's doing that, um, my polls aren't working because I logged in on my phone to show you the screen. But the two oh. questions were, and if you wanted to um, pop the answers in the in the poll, in the chat, was uh, which recipe have you been inspired to make tonight? And the second question was, um, did you want any follow-up from your consultant? Were you interested in hosting a cooking experience to unlock some host rewards, purchasing a Thermomix, earning your TM6 or joining the team or anything else? So um, it's popping in the chat so we can obviously help follow up, but we'd love to hear what you're inspired to make today as well. Thanks, Danny. That's okay. So this is done now. All I'm going to do is pour it. I'm using my jam funnel from the mix shop. Again, another super handy little gadget. I'm just going to pour it into a sealable bottle. Now this is a, a rather large bottle that I have, but I'm just pouring it in here. And remember this is a cordial. So if you're going to mix it with um, sparkling water or flat water, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, just, it's just a cordial. One part of this to three parts of your, and it says it in the tips. If you go down to the tips, you just mix it with your sparkling water water or as I said how about some um, bubbly to make it a really nice summer drink so there we have our bottle of berry cordial that's it awesome. thanks so much Danny so we've got um, some people want to make the gin uh, quite a few people want to make that um, the pina colada breakfast on the go the coffee mango daiquiri um, Sue said everything except the coffee, um, the lemonade. So lots of things there. Again, 
all those things mentioned again. Give the juice a go. The, the beetroot is actually really nice. So um, I'll be having that for breakfast. So thanks so much, guys. Um, this is your opportunity to ask any questions if you had any questions that you did want to ask before we actually log off. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you've got any um, any ideas for any cooking class, anything that you want to see coming up, let me know. Look out for the email. You will get an email from me with all the recipes, the recording. Um, I'll send you the link to mine and Candice's um, glamping um, cooking class for Saturday um, and anything else that you wanted. If there was something specific, just reach out and let me know. And, and we're yeah. doing the conversion class thing very shortly. Oh, yes. Thank you, Danny. Did you want to give a quick rundown on that? That's a great intro to 3.5, oh, actually. And we didn't oh, know. Right. Well, I don't moment. really, we don't know a date yet, but it's going to be very soon within the next two weeks or whatever. We're doing a conversion class. And what that's going to be doing is we're going to grab some recipes that we either use and tweak on the um, TM6 on Cookie Doo, or I've got some recipes that my mother and my grandmother used to make. And I want to be able to teach people how to convert an old-fashioned recipe to be able to use it in your TM6. It's just a matter of rearranging the steps, but, you know, that's what the sort of thing that we want to teach you so that when you go to do your own, you'll be able to do it without a problem. And this is what you'll be doing to think about if you start thinking about recipes that you are interested in or you love when you're a child or, you know, your mum used to cook these, as you said before, um, shortbreads or um, chocolate cake, whatever. Think about what you would like converted and then... When the 3.0 comes, you'll have some recipes that you can work on. But our little workshop will help teach you how to convert them. So there you go. Thanks, Danny. Um, yes, yeah, so it probably will be a night class. Um, yeah, but I'll let you know anyhow. Um, It'll be recorded. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we designed this class not even knowing about 3.0 so it's quite ironic that 3.0 is now coming so it'll be very handy as well that's right thanks so much danny thanks to all the presenters i love my team and i'm super proud to be your team leader and working with you so thank you for um digging deep and running and holding another super duper class thank you holly and to rebecca for the first time presenting so thank you um, me any questions take me off quite like <laughs> Uh, well, better you on spotlight than me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Um, any last questions? As I said, just reach out and um, let me know. And we're more than happy to um, help you as well. So thanks, guys. Have a great night. We did start a few minutes late, so we finished a few minutes late. So thank you. Yeah, we will get on to our drinks, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. I'll stop the recording.